By their very nature, games divide opinions. Nostalgia bakes into memory, fueling desire to experience the game again for the first time. The contrast between more of the same versus the will to update a series with new characters or gameplay mechanics is the quandary game developers face. Well, let's be clear, okay? Satisfying longtime fans while encouraging new players is a challenge. The games in this rundown are all brilliant in their own right, fit to stand tall amongst the pantheon of wonderful gaming experiences released in 2021. However, Analyzing games requires viewing through a different lens. Origami 2 This third-person stealth adventure is a worthy continuation of the thoroughly enjoyable traversal and shadow action mechanics established in the first Origami game. The freewheeling joy felt in teleporting between shadows, up atop ledges and across rooftops is the main attraction here. Crafting your own route through quaint Japanese villages and mystical feudal castles while utilizing your supernatural ninja abilities to silently take down enemies offers enough sustenance to keep the early game engaging. It's a pity that the level design begins to stagnate the more time spent lurking in its shadows. Missions become monotonous, leading to a feeling of stagnation across the game's 10 to 15 hour runtime. At its core, Origami 2 is a brilliant game that is sadly let down by unimaginative mission design. Solar Ash Vibrant, stimulating neon environments are the hallmark of Heart Machine's two games to date. The artistic style of 2016's Hyperlight Drifter, laced in enticing shades of turquoise and magenta, is carried over to Solar Ash. Both games, existing in the same universe, are environments that beg to be explored. A common complaint with Hyperlight Drifter was its lack of discernible narrative. Solar Ash departs from the opaque storytelling of its predecessor with character dialogue and text-based collectibles serving to flesh out the ultra-void game world. It's somewhat ironic then that the writing in Solar Ash is rather derivative, ultimately failing to capture the drama promised by the world-gobbling black hole narrative. No More Heroes 3 Action-adventure Hack and Slash No More Heroes 3 is the latest in developer Grasshopper Manufacturer's slick, if somewhat ludicrously over-the-top, gaming experiences. Like its predecessors, No More Heroes 3 is tinged with absurd quirks, keeping fans of the series content. Longtime fans will also appreciate the solid writing and stylish art design typical of a SUDA 51 title, even if the graphics and textures are rudimentary at best. Games like these will always divide opinions though, and in the case of No More Heroes 3, its penchant for detractors isn't helped by the Wii era graphics and repetitive campaign missions. Still, with an emotional story underlaying satisfying combat, No More Heroes 3's fans should outweigh its critics. It might just struggle to obtain the broader audience the series deserves. Oddworld Soulstorm Serving as both sequel and reboot, Oddworld Soulstorm features a bevy of incredibly well-implemented gameplay mechanics that returning fans of the challenging platforming series will love. There's undeniable charm to be felt in this rehash of a 90s classic, but some of the modernized gameplay mechanics are unnecessary additions. This is a crying shame, as elsewhere, Oddworld Soulstorm's plethora of gameplay elements come together seamlessly. Of the new gameplay mechanics in particular, the new crafting system largely serves to break the flow of platforming action in favor of players spending unreasonable amounts of time in the game's menu screen. This issue is compounded by the fact crafted items are lost if you fail to reach the next checkpoint, resulting in tedious, repetitive busywork. Resident Evil Village Veering away from the desperate survival horror tropes of RE7 to return to a more action-orientated experience and village always had potential to be divisive among Resident Evil fans. The fact of the matter is that while Village offers some of the tightest combat in any Resident Evil game, its scare factor is arguably missing. 
Survival horror should leave the player feeling as though they're barely clinging on to life. Anxiety and fear should be suffered in every encounter. From this point of view, Village doesn't always deliver. And that's not to say the experience isn't truly astounding. The rich, detailed Eastern European setting with darkly distinctive locales, rewarding cautious exploration is one of the game's many stellar highlights. Scarlet Nexus Scarlet Nexus brings heaps of enjoyable action and vibrant anime-style art direction to the open-world RPG genre. The story itself hints at underlying political themes of classism and discrimination, but the opportunity to flesh out these ideas is underutilized. You see, backstory and lore can be explored in open world games via side quests. Scarlet Nexus, on the other hand, opts for the player to undertake numerous fetch quests for its side missions content, like go here, kill this. In a dense narrative packed with themes of civil unrest, war, and time travel, elaboration through environmental storytelling would have been appreciated. Near Replicant version 1.2247447, the original Near flew somewhat below the radar when first released in 2010. As a sequel to the fifth ending of the first Drakengard game, Near was developed to be an RPG that be palatable to Western audiences outside of Japan. Owing to the huge success of Nier's sequel, Nier Automata, we now have the remastered Nier Replicant version 1.22, etc. While the captivating story of friendship underpinning Nier has stood the test of time, Replicant fails to modernize some of its outdated mechanics, namely its quest design and repetitive combat. The story remaining largely uneventful for the first 10 or so hours will be an irredeemable oversight for some, while its intended form of meditative foundation Ling will be appreciated by others. Neo The World Ends With You The long-awaited sequel to 2007 Nintendo DS classic The World Ends With You could have gone very wrong for co-developer Square Enix and Hand. Translating the original game's distinctive combat style from handheld console to Nintendo Switch was always going to be challenging. There's also the small matter of multiple unresolved plot lines from the 2007 game that fans have been clamoring for answers for 14 years. Thankfully, on both counts, Neo delivers. The issue lies in the fact that having given so much airtime to resolve all those dangling plot lines, the scope dedicated to fresh story arcs for its new characters is limited. It'll pay to have played the first game if players want to get the best out of its sequel. Life is Strange True Colors True Colors marks a departure for the Life is Strange series. Gone are the preceding games' developers, Don't Not Entertainment, with Deck Nine taking the reins for this latest entry. True Colors is also the first LIS title to be released as complete, veering away from the episodic releases characterizing the series up to now, a huge risk for the new dev team. Dishing stories out in segments is a mainstay of the series, with a narrative structure centered on episodes supporting slow-paced story development, affording player opportunity to mull over events between episode releases. With a cast of new characters and a brand new setting, True Colors risks alienating its longtime fanbase. Sure, some will wish the game revisits the homely Arcadia Bay instead of new setting Haven Springs, but the depth of strongly written characters within an emotionally poignant story should satiate even the most stubborn of detractors. True Colors is a triumph, an essential entry for fans of the series. Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown Ultimate Showdown is a rehash of decidedly old Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown, itself an add-on to VF5. Initially, then, you have to ask yourself, why is Sega applying their time and effort to a re-release rather than a new entry? Well, Virtua Fighter is known for its technicality and deftly balanced characters, each with unique moves that are challenging to master. The original Virtua Fighter 5 perfectly refined these mechanics, and as such, Sega has left frame rates and balance the same they were nine years ago. 
Really, the only substantial change is the facelift, and to be fair, Ultimate Showdown looks great. It has a vaguely vintage appearance, but the action is as smooth and as satisfying as ever. Here's hoping Sega is looking to build the game's online community, as it'd be a shame if Ultimate Showdown marked the end of the road for this marquee fighting franchise. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.